some very cool windowing demos to show us. Yeah, hello, hello. Hopefully uh, you are all enjoying this so far as I am as well. So uh, my demos will be focused on desktop and specifically windowing first. Uh, if you go back in time into the dawn of times, Uno platform was always like a single, the, a single window uh, framework. But now with 5.2, we have expanded the horizons to multiple windows and we have now support for multi-window applications in all our desktop targets. It's uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So I have this simple uh, sample application. I will post links to everything I will be showing in the uh, comment uh, section, so you can also browse it. The sample will be open source in Uno Samples repo, so you can find it there and play with it there as well. Uh, but uh, to just explain, I think the, the links didn't show up probably because I'm not allowed to, but, but uh, Jerome will post them later. So uh, so the, this sample application shows some of the windowing features and APIs that we added in 5.2. And I, I'm running this, as you can see, this is a weird window Chrome, as uh, Steve mentioned. This is also WSL, so Linux application running in the Windows subsystem for Linux. So this is a Linux application. Uh, so uh, Linux target of Uno platform, and this application will showcase some of the windowing APIs. So let's first click on this button, which will so show the second window. So this is a premier uh, showcase of a uh, second window in Uno platform. First time you ever see it probably. So this is uh, side by side, the main window for our application and the second window. And as you can see, they both run at the same time. And uh, because they are both running on the same UI thread, you can even communicate between the windows quite easily without any problems with synchronization or you having to use dispatchers to do that and as uh, these things. So just to show you how that works, this super simple sample, I have the code right here and it's very succinct actually you first create an instance of the window then you set up the ui for that window and in my case it's a grid with some text block showing hello from second window and finally you set the content of the window uh, to the content property and then finally you activate the window with the activate method and that displays the window and you can then manipulate it and uh, display it in your app. So of course, this is uh, very nice and relatively simple, but you might prefer to do that UI work in XAML. And you can, of course, do that. And you can do that because you can use custom window types. So you derive your own custom window from the window type. And an example of that is here in the custom window button. So if I click this, you can see it opened secondary window i can open multiple of them even so i have uh, four windows open here and i can show them side by side or close them as i need and this window is no longer a basic window instance it's actually a fully custom type that's deriving from window and we can see it here i have a window xaml file a custom window.xaml file and it has even custom window.xaml.cs code behind file. So it contains both XAML and code behind. And you can see it contains all the UI that I was displaying there, plus some code behind logic that takes care of incrementing the counter of the windows and uh, generating that nice random uh, color on the background. So this allows you to create custom versions of your windows and quite easily display custom UI on those windows as well. Uh, just to preview that this is not just a Linux thing, I will now switch to Windows target as well. So you can see the same thing happening there. So let me run the Windows target and the same exact application is now running on Windows. And I will show you the next sample there, which is window title which uh, is just a simple property, basically. You set window.title to some text, or you can even data bind it, as I did here, to the text of a text box. So I have two-way data binding. So if I type here in this, hello webinar, uh, you can see it's showing up here in the title bar of the window. So it's a two-way binding to the window title. And as part of this demo, I 
kind of secretively showed another uh, announcement from 5.2, which is uh, Skia native text box. Because this text box is no longer what we had before. We had a kind of overlaid uh, text box control from WPF uh, or from GTK on top of the window so that we could uh, allow some user input. Now it's completely native to Skia and it's handling the native key events of the system that the application is running on. So it works on Windows, it works on Linux, it works on Mac OS, and it's all rendered using Ski. So it looks completely native and the text looks the same as all the other content of your application. And it has all the features you would expect. So actually I can switch here to my Czech language and say, uh, ahoj z Česka. So it's our Czech language, and you can see even uh, our weird accented characters are working correctly. So that's super cool because you know I'll have to have the support for IMEs uh, built in, and you don't have to care about anything uh, complicated. Plus, it also supports all of the text box features that you would expect. So if I write hello and right click, you can see the context menu that says uh, select all. I can cut text, I can paste text. It's just like a native text box. It's just rendered using Skia. And I have to say kudos to my uh, colleague, Rames, who has implemented all this. And it works really amazingly. So really great work by Rames. All right, so that was a window title. Let's switch back to the samples here. And I will show you how you can make your window full screen. So if I click on this button, it opens a full screen window. It's kind of immersive. It covers the whole screen. I cannot see anything else now. And uh, you can see there's no title bar as well. So it's really a full screen window. And it's super easy to do with the new APIs that we added in 5.2. I should probably mention that all of these APIs that I'm showing are based on Vin App SDK APIs. So it's the Vin UI APIs. And it's the same exact namespaces, the same exact types. So the same exact methods that you would see in VinUI applications. So that's pretty cool that you don't have to learn anything if you already know VinUI. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, the full screen mode can be started by setting the presenter of the app window to be full screen. Just single line of code, but it makes your uh, window run full screen. Very simple, very easy. And you can also see here, uh, calling the close method on the window does exactly what you expect. It closes the window. So super simple API as well. All right, now let's see maximizing, minimizing. So this sample allows you to maximize the window, restore it back to windowed state, and then minimize it to the taskbar. So it's here. And again, super simple API. Let me see here. It's in this code behind file, you first grab the app window presenter, which is by default the overlapped presenter, which kind of uh, allows windows to be overlapped on in the desktop environment. And then you call the methods that you would expect. So minimize for minimizing, restore to restore the window state, and maximize to maximize the window. Super easy, nothing, uh, nothing complicated, nothing you would have to learn. And it's just intuitive working with it. So finally, uh, we have the ability to keep the window on top. So you can see this window now always stays on top. So even though I want to show you the code snippet, I cannot because it's there. So I have to, I have to shut it down. And I will show it here. So the OLED presenter comes again from app window. And you just set the is always on top property to true, and that's it. It just makes your window always on top. And you can use that for some data visualizations that you want the user always to see, for example. So very useful API, and it's now finally part of the uh, of our API surface, and it's very easy to do without any platform specifics. And it works on Linux, it works on Windows, it works on Mac OS, so you have the full coverage of all the targets and that's pretty fun, right? So, uh, so I, I uh, actually the uh, the sample as I mentioned is on GitHub. You can see the PR and you can play with it yourself if you want. But there is also windowing docs, 
Again, the link is in the comment section and it contains all the links to windowing support, secondary windows, how you make uh, your windows pulse screen and everything there uh, that is really important. So uh, if you want to read more about how windowing is implemented, go there and should see everything you need. And if you're missing something, let us know. We will add it. All right, so now let's... Uh, actually, one thing that is quite important here, uh, because windowing is a desktop-specific thing, uh, if you want to have a proper windowing API support, you really need also proper desktop uh, support. So you need to work well on Windows, you need to work well on Linux, and you need to work well on Mac OS. And that's another topic that we have covered in 5.2. We have added this new uh, target framework, which was already mentioned several times before. It's .NET 8-Desktop, uh, and it's a common target for all the desktop targets that we support. So uh, even though you have one single assembly that's, oh, uh, that's desktop, and you have one single file that's program CS that targets all the different desktop targets that we support. It's very simple now to target both Lin uh, all of Linux, Linux frame buffer, macOS, and Windows with just single assembly. Uh, so you can generate a single assembly that you then run on all the targets, and Uno will automatically, automatically even. Uh, figure out which target you are currently running on, and it will pick the right assemblies at the right uh, Uno platform implementation, uh, the right Uno platform backend to run your application on that specific runtime target. And these two, uh, the X11 support and macOS support, are completely new as well. Uh, again, kudos here uh, for X11 implementation goes to Rames, who has implemented the whole thing himself. And for macOS to Sebastian, who has made this amazing macOS implementation. So amazing work by these guys. And uh, thanks to them, we have now proper macOS and Linux support that is really feeling native and does not require any GTK magicry and any GTK issues that we had before. So it's very nice to have the native, native uh, support for these targets. So let me now just uh, show you one, one more thing here. As you can see, the program CS file includes this new Skia host builder type, which allows you to customize the, uh, the desktop targets. And you can even decide that you don't want to support macOS. So if you don't want it, you just really delete it. And that makes your application support X11, Linux frame buffer, and Windows only, for example. So you can customize this. So if you don't want to support all of these targets, then you can remove them. But of course, why would you if you want to target everything with Uno platform, right? <laughs> so uh, this is the default, which includes all of the targets and makes your application run really everywhere. OK, so I will run this application here on my desktop. Yeah, we load it back here. And we should see it running in the Windows desktop target. Let me switch to Light Theme so you can see it better. Uh, the application uh, is the gallery application that you know from our gallery.platform.uno website. Uh, but on this app, I would like to show you some additional things that are new in 5.2. Specifically, we have added the teaching tip control. Uh, if you click here on this button, you can see it shows up this nice teaching tip that you can use to explain some functionality of your application to the users or direct them to some docs, for example. So this teaching tip control is kind of a customized pop-up for app explanations or uh, app guidance, basically. And it's very easy to implement. Uh, the Zambo is quite simple. And you can provide your hero content, your own uh, content for the teaching tip, and some title and subtitle. It's uh, quite customizable. It can even contain buttons, uh, so you can confirm or discard some actions, for example. So it's kind of an advanced control. And now it's part of uh, Uno platform as well. And it's completely ported from WinUI. So it's exactly the same source code as, as in Windows. So everything you know from Windows will work here as well. All right, and finally, uh, one additional UI feature I want to showcase here, and I have to 
uh, make a shout out to our friend Ahmed uh, Walid, who uh, you might know from Twitter. He is always posting some crazy composition API uh, samples, and he implemented complete support for acrylic acrylic brush in our Skia targets. So now we have acrylic brush, and it's not just any acrylic brush. It's the full acrylic brush support with tint opacity, tint luminosity opacity, and it's exactly the same as on Windows. It's exactly the same UI. So if you make your application run on Windows, you will see exactly the same UI on our SKIA targets, which is pretty amazing and really amazing work that uh, Ahmed has done here. And we are really thankful for that. So uh, thank you very much, Ahmed, if you're watching. So uh, final thing I want to show you, if uh, I ask Jerome to switch me to my Mac OS, I, uh, I, I I would like to, but it's oh. not appearing in my list. So if you can share it again, okay, please. I will share the screen again. Yeah, it went to sleep. Um, and <laughs> so it's probably that's because yeah, uh, there you let go. me show. Okay, so here is the same gallery application that you have just seen on Windows and or on WSL, and it's now running on macOS natively. So it's a native macOS application and it behaves exactly the same as you have seen on Windows with all the transitions and all the features that you might expect. So uh, this is the showcase of the macOS target as well. Very yeah, nice. So I think that's it. That's a lot of cool demos that we have there. <laughs> very, very cool to see. Uh, lots of uh, lots of good features from the from the whole team. It's. Uh, I hope uh, you're going to all enjoy what uh, Martin's just showed. Uh, so next.